I remember one time I was having a really weird day. Uh, I had woke up in the morning and I said, God, give me somebody to talk to. And uh, so I go for a walk and who would I run into? <laughs> He's a, he was a prison guard uh, from the prison in the city over here. Um, there's a video somewhere in my feed where uh, where I said I, I said the Jericho prayer. Um, I clock strike at nine, <laughs> sixes and nines. Um, but I uh, I prayed for that prison to close down, and then the next day the governor announced it. It was like, what? Yeah. But Pauly worked at that prison. And um, so I went for a walk, run into Pauly. We're, we're kind of just, you know, hoofing it around town. And uh, and I told him, I go, man, I'm going to go get some pizza. So I head over to this uh, pizza place in town here. Um, I, I sh I'm not supposed to plug anybody on, on the feed, right? So, uh, but their initials are Capozzi. And um, so anyway, I went to that pizzeria and I walk in there and the kid behind the counter, he's trying to like sell me on this chicken finger sub. And I'm like, dude, I just want a piece of pizza. I'm like unemployed. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I probably would have liked to have that chicken finger sub, but you know, um, sometimes things get rough and you got to tighten it up a bit. Right. And uh, so I get my piece of pizza and, and after I'm leaving, you know, I'm, I sit down at the one little table there I eat. And as I'm leaving, you know, I kind of feel bad for jumping on the guy because he was trying to convince me how good it was. He would have said, you know, maybe I should have asked, is it free? <laughs> um, and who knows, maybe he would have hooked me up. But anyway, he, um, I, I went to shake his hand. I apologized. I said, look, man, I'm sorry for yelling at you. I go, you know, I'm not trying to be a dick. I just wanted a piece of pizza. And um, so I shake his hand. I go, my name's Chris. And he goes, my name's Preston. I go, all right, Preston, I'll see you later, maybe. And um, I didn't say maybe. I said, I'll see you later. And so I walk towards this uh, grocery store and um, called the Jubilee. It's now called Shop and Save. My sister calls it Shop and Rob because she doesn't like the prices. But it's a small town, you know. But I walk uh, over towards that store, and as I'm cutting across the parking lot, I see a van there, uh, a van from uh, one of the cable providers. And um, so I walk up to the guy in the van, and I said, hey, man, you guys hiring? He says, oh, yeah, all the time. Go online, fill out a profile. You know, they'll, they'll find something for you. Yeah, okay, cool, thanks. So uh, I go to shake his hand. I, you know, thanks for talking to me. Uh, give me a pointer and he goes you know my name's Chris and he goes oh you're welcome man my name's Preston and I'm like that Pre Preston that's weird doubles so then I uh, go into the store and there's more doubles stuff going on with names there's actually somebody at the counter that's arguing with the customer service lady because you could pay your bills there right your utility bills and um, he's having an argument with this person because somebody in the town has the same name as him and they're getting their bills mixed up. And I thought maybe the guy was upset because, you know, he was paying somebody else's bills. It was the other way around. The other person was paying his bills. And so I, I said, hey, well, that's pretty cool. I go, they, they don't know about it. Maybe you should, uh, you know, get to know the person and... You, you know, you might have some reason to hit it off and have a conversation with them. And a guy turns around, I don't want to know who it is. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Why? Because you have to pay for all these bills that he's already paid for you, maybe? Kind of funny. But anyway, easy to pick people out as to what their motives are by their responses, right? And you know, with a couple little facts here and there. So I'm sitting there, you know, watching these guys hammer it out, and I'm leaning against this, like a pole that's in the store, and all of a sudden I hear beep, I hear like a beep behind me, and I turn around and I look, and I see that there's a price checker there, and on the price checker, 
it shows the number 449. And 449 was actually my number uh, when I had my CB. I had a Radio Shack Realistic TRC 449 single sideband radio. And um, so when I was talking on the CB radio, I needed a skip number, you know, so when you're talking distance, you know, you're hollering like a, like a shortwave radio kind of person and trying to talk across the oceans or wherever, right? And, um, and people did it, you know, uh, FCC regs, they didn't like you to do it. You're not supposed to. Um, but it was like, you know, if you're not running all kinds of extra power and linears and things like that, then, hey, you know, I can't help it if the conditions in the sky are good enough for me to talk that far, right? So I look and I see this number 449 on there and I'm like, and, you know, I'm like, whoa, that's weird. And then I kind of look and I realize it was some kid. He's walking down the aisle now looking at a box, whatever it was he had. And so I'm sitting there and, and I'm just getting kind of, this is really weird, you know, double this, double that. And now I'm seeing my number. And I said, you know, I'm going to get out of here. And, um, but I thought about it. I said, you know what? I go, maybe I should buy some lottery tickets. And I, there's a guy in front of me in line. And, uh, so he gets his tickets and leaves. And I told the lady, I, you know, I qu quickly think, and I go, just give me the same tickets he got. Right. Thinking double tickets, right? Maybe he's going to win and I'm supposed to buy the same tickets. Well, guess what happens? She winds up giving me two tickets or four tickets in two different piles. A left pile with the same numbers on it and a right pile with the same numbers on it. I'm like, ugh, okay. <laughs> but I want to say that before I took those tickets, this is, this is how it went. Give me the same tickets he's got. Wait a minute. Hey. Can I play the same numbers as you? <laughs> Is it okay if I split your $250 million jackpot? And the guy's like, yeah, go ahead. He didn't care. And then I, so I bought my tickets and I got, like I said, two piles of two again. And I'm like, all right, this is really weird. I'm getting the hell out of here. So as I start walking out of this store, there's a lady who is hanging a poster onto the, uh, you know, like a corkboard thing. Where you put up flyers, you know, you're selling something, having a party, Chinese basket auction, whatever. This, What this was for was for a psychic party. Uh, I live near a town called Lilydale, where the entire town is nothing but mediums and psychics. Palm readers, fortune tellers, like the whole town. It's kind of weird. And you can't live there unless you are one of those people. <clears throat> well, I looked and... I looked at the lady and I kind of followed her out and, you know, I'm kind of always thinking quick, you know, like opportunity. Why, why am I seeing this lady, you know? So I just, out in the parking lot, I just kind of, I ask her, I go, you one of these psychics from Lilydale? And she says, why, yes, I am. And I said, what's up with 666 and Satan? And she goes, 666 is just 999 turned upside down. And Satan is the Christian boogeyman. And it's like, that was weird. Because she said 666 is 999. And I actually started my walk of faith on 999, September 9th, 2009. And then later on, I found out that was the start date of the last sacred cycle on the Mayan calendar. And then I found out recently... That on the Enochian calendar, it's the 25th of Elul, which is December 25th, the, the 12th month, 25th day, but on another calendar. Now, you know, that's weird, right? Um, and the Mayan thing was, I didn't know about that until the world was going to, you know, until like the, they said the world was going to end because then I started researching on that kind of thing, but. So, you know, she gives me this 666999 thing and Satan's a Christian boogeyman. And I said, uh, I looked at her and I wasn't the answer I wanted, you know. To me, at that point in my walk, Satan was a very real coming to get you force to be reckoned with, right? Everybody talking about you, you know, I would say, oh, I want to get in the ring with him. I'll kick his ass and whatever. And, and you know what? 
people uh, would be like, oh, yeah, you think you're a bit, he'll tear you apart, and blah, and I'm like, well, I don't know what the hell scripture you're reading, man, but from my understanding, it says, tell him to flee from you, and he's gone. I figure if I can get in there and get a couple pu plugs in, and then I'll tell him to leave, right? <laughs> so, I, you know, I ask her, and I want to pin her down and, and see what the hell she's talking about, and I go, and, and so I, you know, I figured, okay, psychic. So I said, you believe the universe is in perfect balance, right? And she says, oh, yes, the universe is in perfect balance. And I said, well, if I've got this all-powerful positive force, God, what's the all-powerful negative force to balance it out? And that lady backed up off of me. She, it was like I had the, I don't know, <laughs> uh, something communicable. She didn't, <laughs> she backed off of me and she stuck her hand out leaning back as she pointed and she goes you 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 just remember that your focused mind's the most powerful force in the universe and she ran from me and i was like okay i'm gonna get out of here <laughs> because um i i got in trouble like a few weeks before i was buying food for people at, at the mcdonald's just you know that were drinking that nasty coffee. I was buying apple pies for all the old people. I thought it was okay. The cops came to my house. And they're asking me, you know, how long you been in town? Where are you from? What are you doing here? Why are you buying pies? I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, we know you're being too nice, so you're up to something. You're shitting me, right? <laughs> but she runs off, this psychic runs off and back into the store. And I found out later she took down the poster. Then I'd leave there. And I start walking towards this uh, Chinese food restaurant in town. It's uh, called the China King. And uh, I was supposed to say the initials thing, I'm sorry. Uh, their initials are China King. And um, <laughs> so I, I go in there and there's this girl and she's like got, you know, like 15 bags on the counter and she's looking in this one and checking that and putting extra stuff in and big pile of bags easy to figure out. I looked at her, I said, I go, oh, gopher, huh? And she goes, yeah. <laughs> and I said, where do you work? So I work at the housing authority over here. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I, when I got divorced, I showed up in town and I thought they could get me an apartment and, you know, housing authority. And I went there and I found out it was for, you know, people that have mental problems and, uh, different challenges and so on. And, and she says, well, you know, you might be suffering a little depression after your divorce. I can always get you an appointment with the guy up the street. He can write you a prescription, and then I can get you a better place for cheaper. And I'm thinking to myself, whoa, wait a minute. So, like, your sales pitch to get me a cheaper place to stay is for me to take, you know, antipsychotics? And I said, no. I go, no. I go, listen. I go, I, I'm struggling, sure. I said, but everything God puts you through is so you can help somebody else. I said, I lost my home, I lost my kids, I lost my twin girls, they, they died. I lost my animals, my wife took them. All my friends alienated me, I had to move, I came here, my brother died, I, you know, and, and um, all this stuff I brought up. And the next thing I know, I realize is I'm trying to give my testimony to this girl. She's in tears. She's fully in, just in tears going, what? And I'm like, what's wrong? And she goes, that's exactly what's going on in my life. And it's like, <laughs> maybe you need some medication. No, I, I didn't say that. Um, and you know what? Her name was Angel. And she lives here in town somewhere. I actually ran into her uh, last year at the end of the year down at the river. And I didn't even realize it was her. <laughs> um, and she like, she offered me, she was just hanging out by the creek, you know. Uh, she had a little fishing pole and a chair and whatever. And she was like, you want to smoke some weed? I got some moonshine you can drink and all this stuff. And it's like, no, I'm okay. Uh, I've been in enough trouble here. I don't think I should be going down by the river with some uh, some woman that ain't my wife, right? And, um, but she... Uh, she was busted up in tears, and I, you know, I said, no, I go, God will help you through this, he'll get you through it, you know, that kind of thing, and I sent her on her way, and, um, but then, 
after, you know, it was just weird, right? The whole day was just getting very strange. So as I'm sitting down, uh, I finish my, at that time it was, uh, I want to say it was three ninety five dollars to get a lunch special. And now it's almost double uh, because of the uh, prices going up, COVID, whatever. Um, I can't afford to eat there anymore. I, it doesn't sound like much, but uh, yeah, things are tough for the Chris man. And so, uh, <laughs> but as I, I grab my fortune cookie, I'm just thinking, God, I go, you're, this is all going on. This is your thing, right? I go, show me something I need to see here. And I open up my fortune cookie. And you want to know what my fortune cookie said? Almost the exact same thing that that psychic said. It said, the focused mind is one of the most powerful forces in the universe. And you know what I know now? If everybody would focus on God's word, okay? And whether you want to call that Jesus or Logos is, you know, uh, Tobias Singer was just griping about. Um, I want to tell you something. That word is powerful. Uh, it is a blessing and a curse. It's the perfectly designed law. Uh, and it's an inescapable. You cannot break God's law. People say you can break it. You're not breaking anything. You're just bringing a curse on yourself. I mean, that's what it is. The law is a blessing and a curse. And so if you rebel against it, then it's a, a curse, right? Um, what does God say? If you obey, and this is in Isaiah, he says, if you obey, you will eat the good food of the land. But if you rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. And see, a lot of people would read that and they think that that means that um, I'm going to, you know, Here's, here's what people don't see in the Bible. They would, they would read that statement and immediately means somebody's going to come after me and kill me. God doesn't work that way. It's these two forces working against each other and with each other. We make them work against each other by the things that we do. We're, we see that line of enmity because our eyes are open and we start a war. But listen to what that says. If you obey, you will eat the good food of the land but if you rebel you will be devoured eaten by the sword so can you see it either you eat the good food the living water bread of life so on or that living word turns into bitter water and destruction for you it devours you sound familiar you want to talk about the book of Revelation? I'll tell you what that book's about. And it's not about what people think it is. Um, yeah. <sighs> Share my videos. I love you guys. Shalom. Let's take a look at scripture. See what we get. I'm not going to look at the numbers. I'm just going to say, uh, how about... John, John, Isaiah. Okay, so we got John 9, 5, and 6. John 6, 2 to 5, and Isaiah 3, 6. Let's see what they say. John, John, Isaiah. What the hell is that? How a hairy brain and her belly changed science. What the hell is this shit? <laughs> My wife would be laughing right now. You just snorted. <laughs> oh, all right. So let's see. John, John, Isaiah. John, nine. Six to f six and five. Oh, five and five to six. Sorry, I don't know what it would do if I type that. Uh, 
while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. John 6, 2-5 And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? That bread, when it says Jesus was the Word, it's the Word of God. That's what Jesus is, the Word. If you've seen your Bible, you've seen God. And in a certain way, you've seen Jesus. Isaiah 3, 6. <laughs> a man will seize one of his brothers in his father's house and say, You have a cloak. You be our leader. Take charge of this heap of ruins. Hmm. Interesting. A uh, bunch of scriptures to just pop up like that, right? Not looking. Just plucking them out of the air. Um, there's more going on in this world that people will perceive. Uh, right now, what we're fighting is a very real thing. And I know how to stop it. Take me to your leaders. Shalom.